Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. 28 and 8. That's what I said. I said 28 and 8. Okay, and you're thinking, and this guy's totally lost his mind today. He has absolutely lost his mind. Well, actually, I haven't. Uh, that is actually the number of single-family deals that were made available to me since Sunday and multifamily deals. So the 28 represents 28 properties that are available for sale that meet my investing criteria. Eight represents the number of multifamily deals that have been made available to me that meet my investing criteria. And the reason I'm pointing this out is because you have heard a lot of information in the news. I mean, heck, let's, let's talk about the New York Times. They published a report on February 26th that talked about a shortage of available houses in the economy. And they backed up their, their story. They actually did. They went out and they did a lot of research and they put a nice graph into their article. And basically what the article is saying is that the number of homes for sale nationally has, has plummeted. And they're right. They're absolutely right because uh, Alto's research provided them documentation and data for this graph. And what I'm seeing is this. I'm seeing that around the 2015 to 2016 time period, the amount of homes for sale nationally went from almost 1.5 million to a current number of 468,000. That, that is a significant decrease in inventory. Now, there's a lot of reasons why that has occurred. I mean, during the the pandemic, people haven't been moving much. I mean, we were all told to stay home. And if we could work from home, if you were an essential worker, you could go to your workplace. And nobody wanted to get themselves in a situation of trying to transfer. Now, did people transfer companies? Yes, they did. Did people leave one job and go to another job? Yes, they did. Did people move out of one location and into another location? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of data that shows that people have been fleeing states like California and New York for states like Texas and Florida. So there's a lot of activity out there. But I think the segment of the market that's really the most impacted by this reduction in available homes is really the, the people that are looking to maybe trade up or trade down. I think a lot of people have just said, you know what, I'm just going to hunker down and I'm going to wait and see what happens. So homes have not necessarily been going on the market. And as a result of that, there's still demand for houses. People that leave one location and go to another location are looking for a place to live. And if they can't find a place to buy, their next best alternative is to rent. And renting isn't a bad thing. It really isn't, especially in the current marketplace. So what I want to talk about today is the concept that even though there is a shortage of homes for sale out there, there's still activity in the marketplace. Now, the majority of these single family deals that I received, a lot of these properties are kind of beat up. They've been abused. They haven't been treated very well. And whoever currently owns them is looking to just get rid of the property and get whatever they can get from that property. And because that property is, in most cases, in an inferior condition, 
it's not going to qualify for FHA or VA financing. You know, those government-backed loan programs that are out there that allows people to buy a home to live in at reduced down payment rates. There are certain conditions that property must meet in order to be eligible for that type of financing. And these particular properties, they don't marry up. They just, they don't meet the requirements. So what happens is that people like me and my 50,000 associates at Lifestyles Unlimited, I was going to use the word friends, but I don't know every one of them. I know a lot of them. And the ones I know, they, they have become my friends. And I'm going to learn to know even more when we go to our expo coming up later on this year. But the point I want to make is that now is a good time. If you've been considering investing in real estate, now is a good time to get yourself properly educated. Because if you're not properly educated, you have the potential to make mistakes. And even though real estate is actually very forgiving... I mean, you can make mistakes with real estate and still do okay. It happens. But when you're properly educated and you understand what you're trying to accomplish, the sky's the limit. And by having a shortage of housing out there, a shortage of available homes for sale, as supply declines and demand increases, all of you that took Economics 101, you know that price adjusts upward. So I think what we're going to see in the next couple of years, I think we're going to still continue to see to see somewhat of a seller's market. Now, I'm not predicting anything. I'm just telling you this is what I think. I think we're going to see a seller's market, and you might as well take advantage of that. When we come back from the break, I'm going to share with you a bunch of disinformation. Stick around. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. So 28 and 8. Yeah, 28 potential properties for me to buy that are in the single family space. And 8 potential properties for me to invest in in the multifamily space. And in the multifamily side, it's actually a combination of either deals I can invest in as a passive investor with another Lifestyles Unlimited member who is syndicating the deal, or specifically deals that I can buy for myself and my family where it's just my property. And that is the result of me making relationships with people that are in the industry that understand what I'm looking for when it comes to real estate assets and then sending me opportunities. Now, not all of the opportunities marry up perfectly with my investing goals and objectives, and that's okay. I'm allowed to say no. I don't have to buy everything that's sent my way. What I really want to convey to you is that although there is distress in the home buying market, primarily for people that are looking to buy principal residences, in other words, places for them to live. There really isn't a shortage of great deals out there for real estate investors that are looking to change their path in life. So, I had a really neat conversation with a fellow Lifestyles Unlimited member a couple of days ago. Uh, her name's Loriana, and she and I were talking about some of these message boards out there. And she sent me a couple of links for me to take a look at. And I'm not going to tell you what these message boards are because yeah, I don't want to promote them because I, I the, the problem that I'm having looking at these message boards is that somebody will ask a question. And they will give a certain amount of information, but because they don't exactly know what they're asking, they leave some of the information you need out of what they're contributing to the conversation. 
So when you have somebody like me and Loriana that are properly educated and understand many of the aspects of real estate investing, when we read some of this stuff, we, we go, oh, well, that's kind of a no-brainer. And then as you read down through the message threads, you get a bunch of opinions. And unfortunately, a lot of the opinions that are posted is bad advice. It's really bad advice. And then you'll have somebody that says, well, I'm, I'm an attorney. So, uh, you know, but here's the thing. How do you know that that person's an attorney? The only thing that you get is some little, I don't know what they, what they call those things. Uh, how, however you identify yourself, you know, a, a fake name. I don't, these people don't use their real names. They've, they've got all these, these different, like here's one, Jetto. What is that? You know, here's, here's another one. Smackberry, Plurby. Yeah. Who are these people? And what is their qualification to give you advice on real estate investing? Now, I'm sure that there are some smart people on here because as I read through the 38 different opinions that were posted with regards to this question, you have everything from correct answers to incorrect answers to the stuff in between, which might be kind of correct, but it's not necessarily correct. But people are turning to these message boards to ask questions about situations that they have that's really better reserved for a qualified real estate attorney or a qualified real estate focused CPA or a mentor. What I want to impart on you is this. I mean, if, if you're looking to get started with real estate investing, or if you're already invested in real estate and you're, you're not seeing the returns that you're, you're trying to generate, or you're having issues with your properties, maybe it's time for you to step up to the plate and join an organization like Lifestyles Unlimited. And to spend a little bit of your time, instead of trolling these message boards, spend a little bit of time investing in yourself. Because we will teach you all of the fundamentals that you need in order to make good decisions and to build your real estate business. And building that business is essential to getting you to a place of retirement in five years or less. Now, it's very possible that some of these deals that have come across my desk since Sunday, the owners of those properties don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're slumlords. Maybe they're, they just never were educated on how to correctly invest and own and operate properties. And they run these properties down. And those properties are made available to people like me that understand how to renovate those properties, how to analyze the deal. I mean, before we even renovate, we're going to analyze the deal to see if it even makes sense for us. And we've got all the tools that we need laid out in front of us. It doesn't take us a tremendous amount of time to do an analysis of a deal. As a matter of fact, one of the deals that was sent to me was a portfolio of 14 single family homes that an investor is looking to sell. And I took a look at the portfolio and you know what? I think I could actually do a lot better just picking up one home at a time. Because what I realized based on the portfolio that was sent to me is that somebody was looking to liquidate properties and they were willing to give kind of a discount on the actual fair market value of those properties, because I, I've got all the comps and everything to, to justify the prices that they're asking. I ran my own numbers to determine rent values. And what I realized was that instead of dropping like $630,000 into 14 homes that maybe had the potential to return about $6,200 a month, by the way, that's, that's about $74,000 in cash flow per year. That's nothing to sneeze at. But I also know that I can buy 14 homes and buy them for a lot less cash out of pocket than just walking into that portfolio. Now the portfolio is a great, great opportunity for somebody maybe coming out of a 1031 exchange. So I'm not poo-pooing that deal. I'm just saying when you understand what you're doing, 
you get better results. When we come back from the break, I'm going to share some numbers with you. Stick around. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. All right. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm actually going to read you one of these posts off of this message board. And the reason I'm going to do it is not to humiliate the person that wrote it. That is not my goal. The person who wrote it, I don't even know who they are. I don't know where they live. I don't know anything about this person other than a name that's used as their handle. So here's a question that was posted. And I'm going to read through the whole thing. And then I'm going to kind of go back through and break it down for you. And I'm going to try and be nice. I, I don't want to be mean. My blood pressure gets up, you know, when I, when I see people that just don't understand what they're asking and, and that's okay to not understand, but to just throw information on a website and see what sticks and, you know, some of the information that was responded to this person, some of it was actually good information, but a lot of it was garbage. Here's what this person wrote. So the question they ask is, buy another property or contribute to an IRA? I bought my first multi-unit in October 2020 as an owner-occupied and plan to buy and move into another one in about six months. I have about 40000 saved in a high-yield savings account earning about $15 a month. Should I take about $12,000 out of that? and max out my wife's and my IRAs for 2020 or hold it for the next property. I feel like I'm at a crossroads of how I'm going to fund my retirement and I'm not sure what to do. Have any of you been through this dilemma? Any advice you can share would be greatly appreciated. Okay, let's break it down. There's some good news here. This person, whoever they are, they went out and they bought what they describe as a multi-unit last October. So they've owned this thing for about five months now and they bought it as an owner occupied. Okay. So maybe somebody sat them down and gave them some advice and said, you know, if you want to get started in real estate, one of, one of the ways you can get started is you can go out and buy a duplex, a triplex, or a fourplex as an owner occupant. And in doing so, you can put as little as nothing down. If you you are a qualified veteran and you have your VA entitlement that allows you to purchase property for no money down. Or you can buy it for as little as 3.5% down if you're using an FHA loan. Now, if you're going to use conventional financing, well, that's, that's a different animal. And most conventional lenders are going to want you to put about 20% down. Now, there are some Lenders out there that will allow you to put less money down, but they're going to charge you something called mortgage insurance premium. In other words, it's an additional fee to help cover their risk exposure because you're putting less than prevailing rates down on the property. Okay. Having said all of that, first of all, I want to applaud this person for at least walking down this path. But the thing that concerns me is that they're saying that in about another six months, I'm assuming that's, that's about, you know, they're going to stay in this property for a year. So they probably have an FHA or VA loan because one of the requirements is that you actually live in this property. And after a year and a day, you can vacate the unit. You can put another resident in there. So it is a fully resident occupied property and you can acquire another property. And we have a lot of Lifestyles Unlimited members that follow this strategy. As a matter of fact, my own son is working on the strategy right now. But the thing that they don't describe is how the property's doing. You see, the concept is if you buy, a, say, a fourplex, with the rents that you receive from three of the units, depending on where you are, it should cover 
almost all, if not all, of your expenses to own that property, which translates into you having a place to live that doesn't cost you any money or very little money out of your pocket. And the thought process is this. When you get a year down the road, you find another property to buy, you vacate your unit, thereby leasing it to a well-qualified resident, and that's going to produce cash flow for you. And you acquire that next property and you do it again to wash, rinse, repeat. But this person is not telling us what kind of cash flow they're receiving on the property, if any, which is okay. I mean, it's okay if they're not getting cash flow right now because they're, they're actually defraying the cost for them to live because everybody's got to live somewhere, right? The other, the other issue is they haven't even talked about rents. And what the projected cash flow is. So I, you know, it's kind of hard for me to advise this person because I don't have enough good information. So he makes a statement about he owns one, he's living in it. Uh, well, I'm assuming it's a he, it might be a she. And then they're going to get another one in six months. Okay, cool. And the next sentence is I have forty thousand dollars in my high yield savings account, earning fifteen dollars a month. Okay, so here's my question. What is the purpose for that high yield savings account? Is that to be available for you for emergencies? Are those required by your lender for reserves? Maybe the loan that you got required a certain amount of cash reserves to be held in case something goes wrong with the property. So we, we really don't know much about that. But my, my first inclination is this. If you've got $40,000 sitting liquid in a savings account. You got to have a purpose for it. And if it's earning you $15 a month, okay, that's actually more money than, than my money's earning sitting in, in those kind of accounts. But what is that money potentially going to do for you? I mean, if it's earmarked for a certain thing, okay, I say, leave it alone. I get that. But then in the next sentence, they say, should I take 12000 out of that and max out my wife and my IRA for 2020 or hold it for the next property? Well, here's my answer to that. What are the returns you're getting in your IRAs? And why is that IRA so important to you? And have you not understood the power of cash flow? And the fact that your IRA is paying you one way. Oh, and by the way, it's not really in paying you. It's the money it has to stay in there because that's the way those things are structured. So why would you take money out of your savings account to fund an IRA, which you're not even really going to be able to mess with until later on? We don't even know what kind of IRA this is. We don't know if it's a traditional or a Roth because there's, depending on what type, there's different rules for, you know, what you could do with that money down the road. So I would say this. $12,000, what, what kind of return are you going to get for that $12,000? Or are you just following society's game plan of stuff as much money as you can into retirement accounts because that's what you've been taught? That's what society has taught you. That's what your financial planner has told you. You have to look at this from the standpoint of what kind of returns will I get on my investment? Because you're essentially making an investment decision. Very important stuff here. Now, they go on to say, I feel that I'm at a crossroads of how I'm going to fund my retirement and not sure what to do. Well, here's what you need to do. You need to become a member of Lifestyles Unlimited so that we can teach you a better way to get you retired much faster so that you don't have to rely on things like IRAs. When we come back from the break, I'm going to break some numbers down for you. I promise. with the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We're here to answer your questions and help you become financially free. Hey, look, if, if you've got a real estate investing question and you want to send it to me, do so at askal at l-u-i-n-c dot com. Again, that email is askal at l-u-i-n-c dot com. And if you want to talk to a live real estate investor, 
you can you can actually call Lifestyles Unlimited. We have legitimate real estate investors that are a part of our team that are available to actually kind of talk things through with you, you know, so that if, I mean, if you really want to just talk to a live body that has understands real estate investing, call 866-945-6565. Again, that number is 866-945-6565. Let me get back to this post here. Now, I, as, as I went down through all of the stuff that's out after a bunch of bad advice, this person disclosed later on what they were planning to do with the money. So they were thinking about just, you know, taking like 12 grand of the 40,000 that they have available and putting it into an IRA. Okay. I mean, that's, that's a choice. You can do that. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but I am saying you really need to look at what kind of returns are available to you and when you can access the money and how you can access the money. But they, they later on say that of the $40,000, they were actually considering using $28,000 to invest in real estate. Ah, so, so now we have a little bit more, well, we have a better idea of what they're going to do with the money. So it sounds like to me, they actually have like $40,000 available to them. Here's what I think. And I'm just going to tell you what I think. I'm not, I'm not saying this person needs to do anything, yada, yada, yada. I'm not doing that. But there's a deal that I analyzed not too long ago. It was a property that came on the market. It was available for $102,000. The after repair value on this property, $170,000. So going into the deal, you're working with $68,000 of equity in this property. Now, the rehab on this property is fairly significant. This thing was, well, like I mentioned earlier in the show, at the beginning of the show, this is one of those beat up houses that, you know, is made available to me to, to purchase. Now I didn't buy this one, but I did analyze it. And what I determined after the rehab and the closing, the holding costs, they're going to capture equity in the property of about $14,250. And the cash out of pocket is actually perfect for this particular person. Because the cash out of pocket to do this deal correctly is about $28,250. Now, this person said that, you know, they were thinking about using $28,000 to, to buy property with. So, cha-ching, there it is. This particular property, based on the rent comps that I ran, it didn't take me very long to do it because we have software that we make available to our members that does these analysis for you. And, and I also can just call one of my realtor friends and say, hey, do me a favor, run me some comps on this, and they'll run comps for me because they know that I'm looking to buy property. So the comparable rents on this property came in at $1,200 a month after it's all fixed up, not in its current condition, but after it was all fixed up. The cash flow that this property has the potential to produce is $507. That's, that's what my spreadsheet is telling me, $507. So I'm thinking if you have $40,000 sitting in a savings account, and it's earning you $15 a month. Let's see what that is. $15 a month times 12. Well, that's $180 a year. So if you divide that by the $40,000 that's sitting there, you're getting, uh, let's see, less than a half percent return on your investment. Yeah, that's not a good return. See, if you're getting $507 a month on this property, you're looking at an annual income of not $180, but $6,084, which based on the $28,250 you put into the deal, you're getting a 22% return on your money. So I got to ask you, what's a better return rate for you? Less than half of a percent or 22%? I think 22% is the better number. Oh, and by the way, when you factor in depreciation, that you're going to take based on the fact that you own this property and you're operating it as rental property, the depreciation is pretty much going to wipe out any tax liability that you take in the form of cash flow. As a matter of fact, it should leave you about $100 of excess depreciation that you could use to offset other things. Now, this particular property, too, and this gets back to the statement I made at the beginning of the show. 
talking about a scarcity of houses. Let's say you hold this property for three years, and I use very conservative numbers, very conservative numbers. I, I, I estimate the property goes up about 3.5% per year, which is in line with you know what the markets have been doing. And one of the things that we know at Lifestyles Unlimited is that properties tend to double in value every 20 years. So my number is very conservative. So if you hold this property for three years, you'll get an additional $18,500 in appreciation on this property. Your projected future value at the end of three years is going to be $188,000. So let's say you decide at the end of three years, you want to keep the property. It's a great property. You've got great residents living there. You don't want to mess with it. Not a problem. You're also getting the benefit of the fact that this property is paying down over time. See, when you make that mortgage payment, some of that mortgage payment goes to reduce the principal that you owe. And my estimate is about another mm, $6,900 in principal reduction. So if you had a $136,000 note on this property, at the end of three years, that, that note's actually going to pay down to about $129,100. And let's say you decide to, to hold the property and refinance it at the end of three years. You would put a new note of just shy of $151,000 on this property because your, your new value is at $188,500. So you put an 80% loan on this thing, refinance it. It might affect your cash flow a little bit. Depends on whether you've been ratcheting up rents in accordance with market conditions or you've left it alone. It's, it's a personal decision. You would net on a refi of this property almost $22,000. So you think about it. If you're getting $22,000 back at the end of three years and you still own the property, so you're still you know going to get the benefits of appreciation and principal pay down and things like that, and you put $28,000 into the deal, I mean, you're getting almost 80% of your money back. And then you could take that money and go buy another property. Or maybe you decide you want to sell that property. Prices have been going up because of what's going on in the marketplace. Maybe you decide to sell that property and that's okay. It's a personal choice. So you sell it. And after the cost of sale, which I factor is a conservative 8%, you're going to walk away from the closing table with $44,303. Now, there is potential for you to pay capital gains taxes on that money, as well as some depreciation recapture. But you can also do a 1031 exchange, which allows you to defer all those taxes into the replacement property or properties. So in other words, what I'm getting at is now you'd have like $44,000 in your hand, and you could probably pick up potentially two more properties. This is the compounding effect. And this is why real estate is a far superior investment than just taking $12,000 out of a savings account that's not paying you hardly anything, what did I say, less than a half percent, and putting it into an IRA, thinking that that is preparing you for retirement. Oh, and by the way, if you're putting $12,000 into IRAs, come on, let's think about it. How much money do you actually have in there? when you get to the point of retirement. And is that going to be enough money for you to live off of? These are questions you have to ask yourself. Now, I'm dead serious. When you get a qualified education on how to invest correctly, like the education we provide at Lifestyles Unlimited, you won't be messing around with the stuff that I'm looking at on a message board because you'll know the right answers or you'll be connected with the right people to give you the right answers. And if you want to get started, go to freeworkshoplivestream.com. And remember, it's not the money, it's the lifestyle. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.